Yle Podcast. Hello and welcome again to All Points North, the show that offers you a little slice of Finland each week. In today's episode, we ask if Finland is really the happiest country in the world, as the UN's happiness index would have it. We hear about academic research into paranormal experiences. And finally, we'll try to figure out just why Finns love their coffee so much. This is the All Points North podcast, telling you everything you need to know about Finland this week. It's another cold, slippery Friday in Helsinki, and joining me for this week's All Points North is veteran Ulla reporter Eddie Hawkins, who's been working for the company since the 1970s. Welcome, Eddie. Thanks a lot, Egan. Thanks. Great to be here. And our guest this week is Ali Jahangiri, the comic and TV presenter of such sterling productions as Vida Contato Set and The Ali Show on Ulla Puhe. Yeah. Born in Iran, he came to Finland aged 10 in 1991, and he's done everything from light entertainment to heart-rending coverage of the refugee crisis. <laughs> Welcome, Ali. Thank you so much. That was a very good introduction. Okay, great. <laughs> Now, people know you um, as a comedian, an entertainer, and, well, a celebrity, basically. Yeah. But you also have a, a master's degree in economics. Um, what are you doing as a media personality rather than working in finance or something like that? I think uh, I think the master's degree is, is for my parents <laughs> as a child of an immigrant yeah. the parents you know it's uh yeah, they though they can relate we, we usually we usually have high degrees and then we do nothing with our lives basically <laughs> no i just uh, actually to be honest i mean i when i when i started um when you know in the 90s nobody told us that we can do anything else except go to school you know so that's what and i could never play any music or uh, i was never a very good athlete So I, I decided that you know the school is my way. So I I, I didn't study hard, but I was I, I made it, and then I ended up having a bachelor's I mean a bachelor's degree, and then later a master's degree in business. Uh, but you know all all the while I started doing stand up comedy, and I was just like, well, this is much more fun, and you know from from everything that I learned from from my business degree, I just realized that maybe if I brand myself, then I could make it, and then something happened <laughs> a lot of people were just like you're funny just do this for for your living and and um, i'm on that way so it was useful to in your career anyway. very very useful yeah i mean well, uh, i mean don't they talk about funny business funny business <laughs> <laughs> exactly yeah it, i mean this is a business i mean it's the same business as, as any business as uh, it, it's as hard as any other business you know you have to build a brand maintain a brand uh, market your brand and then you know keep developing as as your audience or your customers uh, go so it, it doesn't really make a difference uh, but for me of course it's just different because i have to think about the things that i say and the way that i present myself and and uh yeah yeah but i haven't really made it that far i mean i'm on this podcast if you think <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding, just kidding. Some way, some way to go before you hit the big time. <laughs> But you seem happy anyway. You oh, seem happy, which is yeah. a very finished thing. Um, as, we, as we found out this week. As we found out this week. Uh, with the UN Happiness Index alleged that Finland is the happiest country on the planet. Yeah. To much scepticism in Finland. I mean, c can you believe that Finland is the happiest country in the world? Does it ring true? Uh, I think I think it's very true. I, I I think that we we have a hard time believing it uh, <laughs> because it's it's not something that we're accustomed to. Uh, I, I mean, I, in my comedy, I always try to bring out uh, different, like ex especially like beliefs that we have that are not true. Uh, like for example, um, you know the the whole idea of of uh, you know us not being happy. It's just a belief. You know, I mean, if you think about it, that you don't, people don't talk to each other that often. You know, we're not really kind to strangers, but that doesn't mean that we're not happy. You know, because being happy is different than to show it as an emotion. You know, you can you can smile inside yourself. You don't have to put it out there. You know, <laughs> yeah, and there are di different things that people can be happy about. I mean, um, I saw some feedback on this it was things that make people happy there are so many empty elevators yeah and a sort of buildings are built with lots of elevators so yeah. you can always choose an empty one <laughs> yeah but that's got nothing to do with happy i mean in general we just don't like other people but we're not, you, social. We're not social but you know why should we be social we can still be happy and not be social i mean i just hate 
Uh, I don't know how America got ranked on that list, but I hope that it was really, really low because they're always so happy and you just look at them going like, you're not really that happy. It's not you're genuine, You're miserable. It? It yeah. feels fake. You must be miserable inside. <laughs> well, there, there are different ways of measuring, I suppose, happiness and, yeah. and misery. Um, this is one thing that came up when, uh, when this was published that people saying, oh, what kind of criteria? Well, in fact, this index was created by a research body known as the UN Sustainable Development Solutions Network and to make the point that what they mean by happiness can also be called subjective well-being. Yeah. And so the criteria they use are a mix of feelings and facts. There's things like the GDP per capita and life expectancy. Um, people that live longer tend to be happy. I mean, we assume the, the living are happier than the dead. Mm. Um, <laughs> And the responses to a series of questions about the freedom to make life choices or, and having relatives or friends you can count on, uh, about generosity and um, you know, giving to charities, and perceptions of corruption in society. Yeah. Well, I think that's in, in that sense, it's it's very accurate if you think about it. I mean, there's nothing happy about those things. It's just like, <laughs> are you OK? It's like, yes, I'm OK. Well, then you must be happy. <laughs> I think that sort of like t that sort of sums the entire Finnish happiness to to think it's just like, uh, so what's your GDP per capita? It's above average. <laughs> well, that's on a global scale. I guess yeah. that's it. I mean, they have in, in the index, they had like a. A positive effect indicator, which is a measure, a measure for happiness, laughter, and enjoyment, and a negative indicator um, for worry, sadness, and anger. And people are asked to think of a ladder with no, <laughs> rungs numbered from zero at the bottom to ten at the top. And the top is the best possible life, and the bottom rung is the worst possible life for you. Yeah. So I think Finns possibly they 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 think it could be much worse. Yeah, they, they, yeah. and I, I I'm pretty sure that you know. I mean, last year sh sort of showed us how bad Finland used to be, like with the whole images of like you know like this is we've had civil war, we've had to fight separate wars to keep our so people know, and you know a, like a lot of people, a lot of my friends, you know, their granddads still tell them like if it wasn't for them. They would have a shitty life. <laughs> so, you know, a lot of my friends are just like, I'm so happy. I'm so happy for everything that I have. But you've also, I mean, uh, in addition to your uh, your comedy, uh, your humor, oh. um, uh, you've also done some, some very serious reporting on one of these, certainly not a happy topic. I mean, back in 2015, you traveled for three weeks with refugees from an island in Greece yep. to Helsinki. And you, for example, you helped a, a rubber boat that was jammed full of refugees yeah. from Turkey to get to dry land. You crossed borders illicitly. Yeah. Uh, you got questioned by police for 12 hours. You know, it sounds like quite an experience. So uh, can you? Yeah, I mean, uh, I think that, you know, in 2015, I, as a, I th uh, I'm not sure how you guys felt, but I individually, I, I, I kind of felt that the Finland that I used to know so, was sort of uh, crumbling. I mean, we already saw uh, certain images in 2011 after the uh, the the Perusuomalaiset that got there, got such a big. Um, there you mean this yeah, uh, right wing party? Yeah, this this right wing party and their popularity within the elections and and that escalated into 2015 where when we had a crisis with the with the refugees and that crisis is, hasn't gone anywhere. That crisis is still there, uh, but people tend to forget because there's no longer people walking across borders. But in 2015, we I I sort of I was kind of fed up with the with the way that. Uh, the media, especially a lot of my friends who are in the in the uh, in the field of media, they they only had one way of portraying these refugees, and I thought that maybe I have a different way, maybe because of my own background, I could help in a different way, and that was something that we did with uh, with a friend of mine who's Hami Ramazan, and uh, he's a very exquisite uh, movie director, and I asked him to come come along. And uh, the whole idea was just like, I'm not supposed to be in the middle. Like, none of us were supposed to be there telling about our feelings. The only thing that we wanted to do was to show that this is how people, this is, this is their journey. And that's what we did. We just wanted to portray how people make this journey. And uh, by, by taking us ourselves out of the equation and just being like the eyes for the, for the general public. And um, what was the reaction? 
the reaction was very good. I mean, we show, we showcased it in in a lot of movie theaters. We had very good uh, discussions with a lot of people. We had panel discussions at the at the uh, end of each uh, at the end of each uh, show. So people would come to the movie theater, watch it, and then we had a panel discussion about it. And uh, a lot of people had questions. Uh, and those questions were the same as we would find on a lot of these um, uh, discussion forums. But there were actual people asking the, the same questions. There were genuine fear. Uh, and uh, there were genuine, you know, um, people didn't know how to react to the feelings that they had. It's and a really I, new thing for Finland, isn't it? It's, isn't a, it? it's mean, a very new thing. I mean, if you think about it, well, I mean, well, my parents came here in 91. Uh, and I was like, in, in 97, 98, when I would go to the store or I, when I would, actually when I would go and, and I would try to play any sports, I was always the only foreigner guy. I was the only immigrant. Like, I, I remember when I started playing hockey, in, in like, I think it was like 93, 94, the referee didn't know how to handle me being on on, on skate, <laughs> send you off. Yeah, he was just like, oh, but but can you skate? I'm just like, look at me, I'm, I'm part of this team. <laughs> so so that was a different. I mean, and that's only 20 years ago. And, and in perspective, now in 2000, like 2015. Well, if you think about it now, three years later after after that crisis, nothing has really changed in Finland. Nothing. Yeah, we've turned a lot of people back. That that was one uh, very well. This is a podcast, so I can say fucked up thing that we've done that we haven't managed to actually give any people like we haven't ma managed to give all people asylum. But um, but that's you know, <laughs> but but you know, being a comedian, it's 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 all about it's all for for me being a comedian. It's it's about it's about the truth. It, it's about the society, and it's about everything that we. It, it's it's for me. It's about. I, I I often refer to myself in my own thoughts. I refer to myself as a as a court gesture. We don't have court gestures anymore, but because we don't have a court, anymore. <laughs> we don't have kings. We don't have, but but uh, these gestures used to put their own life at risk uh, in order to uh, show the king and the queens of the the life of the of the poor, and we don't have that anymore. So I kind of feel that I am that person who does that. So that's why I'm I'm very intrigued with. With everything that happens within, especially with uh, regarding uh, issues of race, um, gender, just uh, to equality. Touch on the race thing a yeah. little bit before we're running a little bit short of time. But um, we, we're going to talk about this um, this social media campaign this yeah. week because next week the Red Cross has an official anti-racism week. But yeah. this week, this all and todd this donut campaign has yeah. sprang up on Twitter and Facebook and yeah. elsewhere where people have said, "I have witnessed um, yeah. some racism." And I, I, personally, I find that quite interesting because a lot of people just deny it. It happens. They they don't believe it when somebody says yeah. um, that this this has happened. But um, what, what can you say? I mean, the ice hockey thing is already quite <laughs> quite well, funny. Said, but I mean, no, but that's that's funny. But also, uh, I I learn how to um, make a difference between what's racism and what system what is systematically uh, being what is systematically being put on on me. As because you are different, you are not allowed, versus something that people are ignorant or just don't know. I mean, the ice hockey referee, he just didn't know how to handle with me. But once he learned that I know how to play hockey, he was okay with it. I mean, he didn't say like because you're just you can't be on the ice because you're <laughs> you know you're you're dark. Just go away. So there's a difference between racism and ignorance. Now in 2018, uh, I think that we're running out of. Uh, out of excuses for ignorance. We're just running out of excuses. I mean, we still have uh, blackface. People do, do still do blackface in Finland, which is like, why? We've already talked about this. You don't have to do it anymore. That is just, <laughs> that is not that you didn't know. And, but, you know, uh, but this Ole Tolistanut was a good example of uh, something that a lot of people just don't seem to understand. Is just like, there is racism in Finland. It's not every day and it's not everywhere, but there is racism. And at the same time, there are people who object to the fact that there is any racism in Finland. That's true. That's true. And now it's time for a roundup of some of the main stories in the news this week, apart from the happiness. Um, first up, a citizens' initiative demanding upper secondary and vocational schools became become free of costs to students reach the required 50,000 signatures over the weekend and will now move to Parliament for consideration. 
Um, schools in Finland don't charge any fees for tuition, but books, computers and other equipment can carry a hefty price tag of up to 2,600 euros. The CEO of the Finnish Youth Foundation, Akiharo, is to step down following a police probe into financial irregularities surrounding Haro and the foundation's board chairman, Pertunosiainen. The uh, non-profit group has close ties to the premier, Juha Sipila's center party, but the prime minister has claimed no knowledge of developments at the foundation and says he trusts that the right decisions are being made. As we've already discussed, the United Nations declared Finland to be the happiest country in the world, or it was a working group under the United Nations, not not the United Nations itself, it's not that official. Um, but the, the World Happiness Report ranks 156 countries by happiness levels based on factors such as income, life expectancy, social support and levels of corruption. Uh, in a statement on Wednesday, President Niinister condemned the nerve agent attack against former Russian spy Sergei Skripal and his daughter that took place in Salisbury, England earlier this month. Niinister said that the use of nerve agent in an attempted murder was a shocking act and a very serious blow to international security. And he called for Russia to provide clarity on the case. He went on to say that both of the provided alternative explanations of the event, deliberate action on the part of Russia or the possibility of the dangerous substances are not under its control, are very worrying. And at a brief stop in Helsinki, the president of the European Council, Donald Tusk, had some choice word for his name words for his namesake, Donald Trump over the proposed introduction of steel tariffs. In the face of a slippery slope to a potential trade war, Tusk urged Trump to make trade, not war, and stressed that the relationship between Europeans and Americans should be cherished rather than challenged. Have you ever had an experience that you can't rationally explain? You know, one of those strange, uncanny things like seeing a ghost or having a vivid dream that comes true. Donna Coleman, who's been looking at this, says that research shows that some 40% of Finland's people have had at least one experience that might be called paranormal. But there's a stigma surrounding the uncanny and paranormal research, as we hear from Donna. A discussion at the popular Night of Science event in late January has drawn a large crowd in Helsinki. The theme of the talk is paranormal experiences in Finland. Professor Maria-Lisa Honkasalo talks about a recent research project called Mind and the Other, funded by the Finnish Academy. A medical doctor and anthropologist, Honkasalo led the four-year study. It's a kind of project that where we try to understand experiences which are in the, in the literature, which are called like unheimlich, uncanny, or weird. Uh, different kinds of like bodily and sensuous experiences of hearing voices or seeing miracles or visions or like feeling a kind of uh, presence, the strange presence of of something. And, and then also of, uh, experiences which are quite uh, frequent. I mean, experiences of um, precognition and telepathy. And our main question was to ask why are these experiences excluded from research on, on human mind or psychiatry or uh, psychology? Why are they like not taken seriously? Based on population research, more than half the people in the Western world have had at least one experience that might be called paranormal. Honkasalo says that in Finland these are as common as arrhythmia, with up to 40% of the population reporting these. The interdisciplinary Finnish Academy project looked at such experiences from a cultural studies perspective, with contributors from fields including anthropology, folklore, history and psychiatry. We think that the experiences were not fitting the the natural science-based category where it's either like normal or then it's pathological and no, nothing in between. And this, because they are like in between experiences, so then they were easily like categorized as as abnormal. When when the project started, so people wanted to contact us because because I mean they wanted to tell stories of of stigma, how they had 
tried to, to become understood like through maybe decades or through several years at least. I mean, how they have contacted different kind of like institutional persons and uh, medical doctors, and but also like priests and, and representatives of the Finnish Protestant Church. And because, I mean, it is... Authorities were not quite sure whether these are <coughs> healthy or sane experiences. So, for, so that's why they always put it to the to the sick side. <laughs> Honkasalo claims first-hand experience of the taboo nature of her research subject as she relates events around the publication of the project findings last fall. She had been leading the research from Turku University, her longtime employer. After the book. Uh, this Mielen Rajoel was published, so then I I was invited to my boss instead of uh, graduating. So then she like dictated that I'm going to lose my my teaching, my undergraduates, and also my like graduate students. And the the listener can be like make own, make own conclusions, but is if they are like causal relations between these. Like events, but anyway, so they just happen to happen after each other. According to Honkasalo, her Turku University employers had earlier wanted to review her work ability due to memory problems, which she denies having. Honkasalo is continuing her work at the University of Helsinki and as a researcher at the University of Arts. And that was Donna Coleman on scientific research into the paranormal and paranormal phenomenon. Uh, have you ever had any experiences, any uncanny experiences? Oh, paranormal? <laughs> I think, like, uh, what's it called? My, my mom, uh, she heavily believes in this concept of jinn, which is like these, uh, what's it called? These uh, the spirits. Yeah, spirits, yeah. And, uh, yeah, I think when I was a kid, uh, she used to go like, "Oh, there must be a gin there." So I was, I was always afraid of them. <laughs> I haven't really had like a paranormal experience myself, but um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, this, this is. I mean, I don't, I don't judge people for having them, and I, I, I don't say like you're crazy. Just go like, eh, I haven't had them. <laughs> yeah. What about you guys? I, I did once stay in a supposedly haunted house, but um, it was a school trip and it was just badly maintained, yeah. and, like kind of old. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> wasn't too scary. I have seen from somebody that I implicitly trust and is a professional, I've seen astounding documentary evidence of life after death. Yeah. Uh, things that were, like I said, uh, I, I sort of choke up every time. Uh, I talk about this. The thing is that um, uh, it was told to me in confidence. Uh, a lot of it is from confidential uh, documents, and uh, the um, the researcher, the person who who put this together, uh, he was planning a book, and then there were certain issues with with publishing, and then uh, then he <laughs> he took the attitude that. Uh, I'm not going to tell it to anyone. <laughs> no, no. Well, his attitude was that what's the point? Because anybody that believes will believe, and anybody that won't believe, no matter how much evidence you put on the table, no. they're not going to believe it. So why bother? Exactly. <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's a good attitude. But this is this is uh, this is uh, diametrically opposed to what uh, Donna was just saying in oh. his report, and that is that there is research uh, being done um, in a lot of disciplines on on these kind of things, and some of the uh, the researchers are well. Th- people that that experience this and now the researchers themselves run into a certain stigma yeah. that's uh, attached yeah, well, to Yeah, well there's a, there's a huge stigma attached to it <laughs> yeah. and the stigma is just like, "Oh, you crazy?" <laughs> but, it's not it's not clever to judge though, I think. No, no, no I'm, not, I'm not judging, I'm not judging, but that's that's how I'm saying that that's how normally generally people actually think. I mean, yeah. what's it called? When I did the I did the show um uh, Ali Coxnelia, the first time we did it for Nenapa, a couple of years ago. Oh, yeah. And I did a 24-hour show uh, on, on Ule Puhe. And uh, I think in the middle of the night, we had uh, these, um, we had like a group of people who actually, uh, who are these ghost hunters. They came into the show and, and we had a discussion about this paranormal activities. And, and they had these different uh, uh, devices where they measured whether there, there was something in the room. 
And uh, to be honest, well, their 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 metrics showed something, but <laughs> that was it. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know. So if there's a ghost somewhere, uh, well, then, then there is. There is indeed. Yeah. There is indeed. Who can say? Something is wrong. Something is wrong. Something is wrong. Um, now it's time for the question of the week, which this time comes from Laura. What's your name? Um, I'm Laura. And your question? Um, why do Finns drink so much coffee? Thank you very much. Well, I'm not sure that we can... Uh, well, I can't give a definitive answer to to that why do they drink so much, but I can confirm that they do drink a lot. Yeah. Now, um, this country has the highest, not only the happiest, uh, maybe there's some kind of correlation here, but we've got the highest per capita consumption in the world. It's about 10 kilos of coffee a year for every man, woman, child in the country, and that's like... More than twice as much as in Brazil, where they actually grow this stuff. Um, so you know, it started started becoming popular uh, in like upper classes in the 1700s, and then by the early 1800s, uh, it got to a point. I mean, over the time, it had been banned and heavily taxed and whatever. And at one point in the early 1800s, then uh, King Gustav the Fourth Adolf, who was king of Finland as well. Uh, he just gave up and issued this proclamation saying, because you, my subjects, are such knaves that you <laughs> cannot get by without coffee, we wish to permit the use of this beverage for the time being. Yeah. <laughs> that's exactly how you used to talk. <laughs> that's exa- that's- <laughs> but in this climate, especially in the winter, you do need a pick-me-up in the, war- in the morning, yeah. something to wake you up. And I did hear once that it used to be vodka. And then it switched to coffee. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've never well, heard that. This is, no. What, no. <laughs> this is what they say. I mean, um, like moonshining, yeah. you know, making your own. Bontica, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, it was, uh, I mean, it was illegal up until 1866. Yeah. And it was only in 1866 that um, it was made, uh, home distillation was made illegal. And so, like, breakfast moonshine yeah. became illegal. Uh, at the same time, the king was saying, okay, well, you can drink coffee if you really need it. Yeah. So uh, it became a, a product, and it became much more I think it's. I think that you're just common. drinking coffee. It's just, I don't know, it's just, that's what you do in Finland. You, you, you just drink <laughs> coffee. Like, you know, I mean, I, I've never actually thought about it. Here's a, a, a very uh, good phenomenon. It's like now, especially a lot of kids on YouTube, uh, Finnish kids, like really, really young kids are tasting coffee. Like for example, they brew different coffees and then they taste them and then they tell each other. I mean, I mean I'm talking about like ten year old kids, and they do this on their YouTube channels. And really, it's, it's a, yeah, it's a very popular thing to do. Actually, it's not. A, I mean, I'm not making this up. You guys can just uh, like finish kids just uh, having coffee. But and and for me, I mean, I started. But well, my parents started drinking coffee when we came here. Like when we were living in Iran, they used to always drink like Turkish coffee. But now my mom can't live without her coffee. I mean, this is, a, this is. I'm not joking. But uh, the first time they ever went to visit the United States, some of our fam- uh, relatives lived there. Um, the next time they had to go there, my mom took her coffee with her. <laughs> she had like a the of Yeah, the Yula Mokka. I was just like, come on. And that's a fun, like the, that Pauling in the Yula Mokka thing. Uh, it's, it's actually, um, it's one of the first Finnish, uh, like to ever make a brand was Pauling. So they used to make these, they used to put like a, like Paulik on their sack of coffee when they would uh, import them. And that's that's actually how that Paulik thing got bigger. And if you think about it, we don't really have anything except Juhla Mokka. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's true. I mean, if you if you drink Salono, it's just like, oh, God. Yeah, yeah. Like, why am I friends with this person? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, when, when I visit people in Finland, they, you always get coffee, especially yeah. relatives in the countryside. Yeah. In England, it's booze. You get a beer or wine or something else. Yeah. Um, but in Finland, that that's a bit of a taboo. So. Yeah, I mean, but it, it sort of changes. Like, in the morning, you get that. But, but I've never seen, like, if somebody offers you coffee in sauna, then <laughs> just run because that is a psychopath that's he wants fake, to do fake. something bad yeah, to look, you. before we get <laughs> get too we get too wired and I have to mention that everybody has a coffee cup in front of them here I'm the only one drinking a black yeah. though everybody yeah. else is mixed up with milk or yeah, something before like that. we get too wired on the caffeine let's let's put the cups down for a moment here and take a look uh, at maybe what's happening this weekend if you have something on your mind, just send your audio message to our All Points North WhatsApp account. 
Our WhatsApp number is plus three five eight four 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 two one zero nine zero nine. Tell us what's on your mind, and your comment or question might be heard on our next show. <laughs> the last scratch was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> good job, you like good job. <laughs> <laughs> now we're approaching the end of this week's show and after this hectic week I'm just about ready to pack it in and start off my wonderful weekend of relaxation in Tampere for the Finnish choir master competitions it says here yeah sure we what, believe that what about you Ali what are you doing this weekend actually I'm doing a show in Tampere this weekend I mean tonight uh, today I'm going to Tampere we have a we have a show in Pakkahun and it's it's going to be um, translated for for deaf people So oh, wow. for yeah, for those who are who have an hear impeachment, they um, is it impeachment? In, in Imped- impediment. Impediment. Yeah, hear impediment, not hear impeachment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then uh, yes, and tomorrow I'm going to be in Helsinki, Alexanderin Tatteri. But they're all in Finnish, so if you don't speak Finnish, don't don't come because I'm not <laughs> going to change my language just because you showed up for listening to this podcast. <laughs> What kind of? <laughs> You're not going to adjust for any. I'm not going to adjust for just one person who showed up because no. they listened to the podcast. No. <laughs> well, that sounds like you've got a great weekend coming up. What about you, Eddie? Have you got any plans? Uh, well, I don't know. I haven't got anything firm. There's um, uh, there's something I'm interested in in Ruoho Lahti here in Helsinki. There's a, a an event, a festival. It's called Karhu the Man. Karhu means That's bear. True, yeah. Karhu the man, and so it's like celebrating guy stuff. Um, so it's got fashion and men caves and toys for boys and <laughs> that food. <doesn't> sound <laughs> toys for boys. Toys for boys. Hey, sounds got, like a guy in a van. <laughs> <laughs> no, they've got, you know, got it's, toys it's like, for boys. It's, it's like motorcycles and <laughs> yeah. and you know that kind of thing. And they've got, but they do have a red district. Oh, yeah. was that a red light district? No, it's, it's a red, red. district. I don't want to disappoint <laughs> you, but a, that is socialist man. That's <laughs> just a part of the the event site that, yeah. that where they have uh, booze. I mean, oh, you can okay, get. Yeah. That's ah. where they sell the booze. That but but I, I think that's a, that's actually a good. I mean, I, to be honest, it's the first time they're actually doing it, right? Yeah, and they haven't done it before. No, I don't and think and so and, f- and for me, it was a, at first I was just like, what, what this is like. I was like, we did, but when I when I started looking at what's happening there, I was just like, well, this is actually something I go to because there isn't really anything like just for men, you know. And I'm not saying it like in a chauvinist way. I'm just saying like, you know, there isn't like there isn't a place where you can just go as a man and be like, well, I'm interested in fashion as well without yeah, being right. judged, yeah. mm-hmm. you know. Because you know, if you're interested in watches, you can go there. If you're interested in in in, in what's it called in, in investing, you can go there. If you're interested in in toys. You can- <laughs> <laughs> Man, toys, I, you can you, go there. You almost talked me into it. I'm, yeah. I might change my plans. Well, I guess we'll see you in town tomorrow then. <laughs> but I'm not going there. I'm not, I'm not going to go there. My face is going to be on Ali Ahagi in the chauvinist event. I'm not going to go there. I'm just going <laughs> to... <laughs> but it's about time to wrap up this week's show. Uh, we'd like to thank our special guest, Ali, for joining us this week. Thank you, Ali. Thank you uh, so much. Don't forget to stay in touch on social media via the, the news Facebook, Twitter and Instagram accounts. This week's show was produced by Lydia Taylorson, reporting was from Donna Coleman, and your presenters were Eddie Hawkins and myself, Egan Richardson. Our audio engineer is Marco Vierico. Thanks for joining us, and don't forget to tune in again next week. You've been listening to All Points North, a podcast produced by Ule News, a unit of the Finnish broadcasting company. For daily news from Finland in English, head to yle.fi slash news and follow us online at Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. You've been listening to Ule News.